Hello and welcome to Zenata Consulting's Beginner Series. Today, we're going to talk about Zoho Desk and we're going to start with tickets. I'm Brett Martin and I'm here with Tyler Colt. Let's get right to it. So Tyler, you've got a ticket up here. Here's your first ticket. It's a perfect example to start with. We'll uh, talk on another series about how tickets actually come into uh, to Zoho Desk. But if you look here, what we're going to really do is go bit by bit, step by step, everything you need to know to how to handle these tickets and reply to these tickets. So uh, let's get going. Yeah, and so what a ticket is, is basically a request or a communication from one of your customers that you know you need to take some action on and respond to. So if we look at a ticket here, we see it has a ticket number. That's just a Zoho assigned ID. You have the ticket subject, which generally if you're working with email tickets is going to be the subject line from the email. You have the person that this ticket came from, in this case, Lawrence. And then you have the company that Lawrence works for if you have that stored in the system. So as a baseline, kind of looking at the ticket record here, a few things that we can do, uh, we can take a little peek at the ticket, right? And kind of pull up a little bit more information about it as a quick view. We can pull up the ticket to edit it, and then we can work with the ticket status and assignment. So we're going to go ahead and assign this ticket to Zen Ada, one of our users here inside of Zoho Desk, which kind of puts it on their radar as something that they need to work on. Now, what we can do is if we click really anywhere in this ticket window, it'll pull up the actual content of the ticket. So again, in this case, being that this is an email ticket, you know, we'll see that it's structured like an email uh, as you would expect, you know, with our subject line. On the left-hand side of the page, we have a lot of the base information about the ticket just displayed for you to be able to either edit or just view. So we'll see again who it's from and the company, some of their basic contact information, see assignment and status. We also have a due date, which of course for tickets is really important, right? You'll likely have some SLAs set up and these due dates kind of predefined based on some information about a ticket. We can also set things like the priority, preferred language, and some classifications or categories of ticket as well. So, you know, you might want to know how much time are we spending on questions versus general problems. So if you start to collect this information, you can report on it later. Also might want to note that uh, right up there next to Lawrence's name, you'll see a little CRM icon and logo. And that would actually take you, if you clicked on that, directly into the CRM and you could look at that record directly. So also I might want to point out that at the very top of the screen under the user, the person's name, you'll see a little CRM link. And if you were to click on that, that would actually take you over to the CRM and you could view the person's record in the CRM, any emails, any history, any other things that you have over there stored on them. But with that in mind, uh, Tyler, why don't we talk a little bit now about, you know, how you respond to tickets and um, basically manage the overall ticket flow. Yeah, absolutely. So again, because this is an email ticket here, the workflow is based on email. So what you can do is up here in the top right, you have the option to you know, reply all or just reply specifically to the sender for the ticket. And so really what you'll see is that though Zoho Desk has a lot of features layered on top of it, at its core, at least when you're working with email tickets, it's basically like a shared inbox. Right? We have these different users and you're assigning the emails and tickets to them to respond to, and then they can work with them all inside of a shared environment. And so we'll see here now that I've you know, chosen to respond, it basically looks exactly how it would just an email client. And we can send a response out to this customer. Now for this ticket, I'm gonna go ahead and save it as a draft and we can uh, follow up on it later. But if we look down here, you would just choose this large send button to go ahead and send the ticket out. Then similar to how you'd work with anything in email, right? You can affect the font sizing and coloring. You can attach images or files to these, you know, as you would an email client. Now, one other thing that we can also do on the tickets to manage some internal communication is comments on the tickets. So if I go ahead and click on the comment button, it pulls up another little window where I can leave 
kind of a history of some things that I've noticed or solutions that I'm working on for this ticket. So inside of here, you can even tag people if you want to notify them that you might be working on this now. One last little note on comments. If you do have your help center or portal set up for Zoho Desk, you can choose to make a comment public if you want the customer to be able to see it when they log in. So those are the basics of handling a ticket. You'll want to respond to it in an email. You can respond to the client that way. You can also make internal comments like we talked about, but let's kind of go across the top of the screen there. We've got resolution, time entry, attachments, and activities. Let's start with resolution. Yeah, so the resolution is a useful tool for tracking what the solution ended up being to this problem. Uh, oftentimes, when you're using a help desk software, you'll get a lot of the same question, right? Maybe just asked by different people or at different times. And so as you're working through these tickets, you can actually save these resolutions and add them as articles into your knowledge base. So for example, you know, maybe someone was having a technical issue with their PC, and I can say, just need to restart the PC, that fixed the issue. And so I can go ahead and save this either just as a resolution or save it and add it as an article to our knowledge base. Now for something quick like this, I probably wouldn't save it as an article. You know, we don't really need to display this out, but I can save it as a resolution that people can pull from in the future uh, so that they can see this. Now, one last little thing is that you can also choose to notify the contact of this and it will send a little pre-designed email template out saying, hey, we've logged this resolution for your problem. Here's what our resolution was, just so that they can also get a confirmation that this ticket is resolved and that you've um, kind of finalized this issue. It's really nice to just be able to quickly add something to the knowledge base right within the ticket itself. I mean, if you've done a lot of research and here's the five steps you need to do to fix the problem, uh, that ability to not have to copy paste it, go into the knowledge base, add it as a knowledge base article, just do it directly from within the ticket. Uh, really powerful. So let's talk about time entry. That's kind of another powerful feature that you can use when working inside a ticket. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So one of the things that you're going to want to know over time is you know, how much time are you spending on certain types of tickets or maybe on certain customers, right? Just so that you have that type of data to make informed decisions. And inside of Zoho Desk, it's super easy to track time on tickets. So if we see up here, this little start button and with a timer, we can actually just press that to start logging our time really at any point as we're working inside of a ticket. And as we're logging this time, it will basically roll up into this time entries tab. So you can see a history of all the different people and you know all of the different uh, teams that may have been touching this ticket. Now there's some additional settings around here um, for setting up time tracking. One of them, if we dive into settings, which we're not gonna go too deep today, um, but is that you can set it up so that the timer automatically starts when you open a ticket. So if you want to just have it automatically logging all the time, then you can manage it uh, just like that. And so once I stop and save this timer, we'll see that it gets dropped into our history of uh, time entries with how long it took and who it was that logged that time. All right, and then the attachment section, really just keeping track of anything and everything that has been attached in that ticket. So if, if there were email attachments that were sent to you, email attachments you sent back, this kind of becomes a central area where you can just kind of go and see those and then add other attachments that you may want to put in here that are things you're working on associated uh, with this record. It takes us to activity. And so within activities, you know, these function similar to activities over in the CRM, if you're a user of that product. So you can basically log any calls, tasks, or events or meetings that might be scheduled in association to this ticket. Um, this becomes useful if you do have multiple people working on a ticket, right? You might want to assign a task to me and one task to Brett and one task to, you know, Mr. Zen Otta to break up the different pieces of work that might be might be uh, necessary to get a ticket resolved. And I guess Tyler, one other thing we should cover on tickets is the views and how you can look at a ticket and the various ways that can be laid out on the page. Yeah, so if we look at our ticket list here, right, where we see multiple different tickets if we have them in the system, 
we'll see there's a little drop down here that's currently set to all tickets. And so if I click that and pull it down, we're able to actually select different filters that we want to have on our ticket view. So let's say I were to filter this down to my open tickets. We'll see this same ticket here because I'm logged in as Zen Auto and it's assigned to me and it's open. But let's say I go ahead and I mark this as unassigned. So it's no longer assigned to me. I refresh my view. That ticket is no longer going to be in here. So for most agents, it really makes the most sense to focus on these views where it has this my, where it's showing that only the tickets for the logged in user are going to show up. Now, if we go back to all tickets, you know, there's one other view that's, you know, super useful. So again, I'll go ahead and assign this back to myself here. And we'll see currently this ticket is open, right? So let's say that uh, I close it out. So say that we finish this engagement with uh, Lawrence and we've resolved their problem. So if I close this ticket, we'll see that if I'm in this all tickets view, it's still going to be visible here. And realistically, once you've closed out a ticket, you probably don't want to see it on your working list anymore. So if we change over and we look at open tickets or my open tickets, this ticket will no longer show up because it's not really on our working list. But if I want to see our history of closed tickets, I can always open up that view and see them here. Now there's one last little topic that I want to touch on with these views. And it's the different ways that this screen can be organized. So up here in the top right, we'll see that we're currently sitting in the classic view. I can change this to a more compact view of a ticket or even a tabular view where I can really like make changes to any of these values on the page. Then we can also look at them as different types of Kanban views. So I could sort them by column or by you know their relationship to the CRM. I could sort them based on their due date, right? Showing that we're due in the future or by their priority if we have a priority assigned. There's kind of a couple different ways to slice and dice the tickets in here. And you can change between them, you know, super easily on the fly to pick the one that's best for what you're trying to work on. So before we go, uh, there's kind of one more really, really nice, powerful feature inside of Zoho Desk. And that is when you're actually sending an email, you have the ability to have predefined snippets. Uh, this is kind of like hitting the knowledge base, but a, a little uh, a little quicker and a little simpler. So you can either add a snippet or just choose from some pre-existing snippets. And this will just allow you to auto-populate information directly into the ticket. A lot of canned responses. So if it's things you're doing over and over again, but not necessarily something you want to put into the knowledge base. I think earlier, your definition of, hey, you just need to restart your PC. That's not something that needs to be in the knowledge base, but something you could mm -hmm. have as a snippet, which would say, try restarting your PC and let me know if that works. Uh, kind of real, real simple, uh, simple things, or like uh, Tyler's putting here, just kind of a, just a nice little salutation that you're sending off. All right. And that's going to wrap up our tutorial on how to work with tickets inside of Zoho Desk. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next time.